rental light towers, we actually buy those ones from Wanko. We can tell the deal. We couldn't build them for what we buy those from. But again, all powered by Kubota. So there are three cylinder Kubota in those as well. Um, we try to keep it all Kubota because we've got all the parts in stock. I was you know, say, it seems to me like you guys are They're Kubota reliable. people. Yep. <laughs> and then over here, we've got our pumps. Um, we Again, we manufacture all these as well. We've got four inch self uh, auto priming. Uh, I'm sorry. Four inch. Um, manual front and then six inch automatic front. Um, we have two different styles of trailer. This is our, what we call our job site trailer. So this is, a, they're not necessarily street legal. Um, this is one that we put it on the truck to haul it to the job site. It gets right. wheeled around the job site, but it's not good enough to go. I mean, if we were down the road, we'd be fine, but all right. the way to Ielson, it's not gonna pass DOT. Right. So then we build our six inch and we have a couple four inch on our DOT certified six inch trailer pumps. Um, and the cool thing about these pumps is we have a built-in either diaphragm style pump or, of course I don't have any of my compressor style over here, or ones with a built-in compression compressor that sits here. And what you'll do is you'll open your valve until you get your head built up and it's pushing water. You'll close that off and then the motor will take over all that head pull. You can do 25 foot ahead is what it's rated for. I've gotten customers up to 45 foot ahead with the auto prime system and you just drop your hose you get it going you walk away and being though it's a run dry it's allowed it's able to if you lose prime it'll drain out you're not going to hurt the pump or the engine or anything for it to keep running you just come back over you start your suction again you get her up and going you turn her back off and you're up and running again. they're they're this unit here will move 36 3800 gpm at 2200 rpm 2300 rpm so they move a lot of water and then our four inch pumps will do about 2400 gpm um at at the same rpm so that's uh that's our pumps um these over here we, these are our bull rails again they're not road legal but these go up north a lot um they've got a generator in them essentially it's just to plug in equipment and vehicles it's all they're built for right cool and there's a lot of that up there yeah, they got to keep their vehicles plugged yep. in in the cold weather and up there. So yeah. With these, you can pull in, you can wire it in, so you can wire it into your job site trailer. So you can be powering your job site trailer and a whole rail of bull rails out front, so all your guys can plug in or equipment plugged in or whatever, whatever it may be. And I want to say there's a total of eight plugs on each, eight plug-ins on each. Which of course you could tee off, you know, a vehicle, you know, you could plug in two per per leg. <laughs> Again, we built lights, lights all the way around on those ones as well, just for that job site application. So they've got some lighting up front of the job site. All right. So then we'll take you over here and we'll show you. You've got a big hole in the ground. So that is actually going to be my brand new service shop. So we're hoping by the very end of September to have it up and going, guys in it working in this shop. It will be, so right now my service guys and my uh, uh, manufacturers are all stuffed in that one building, and so we're all fighting for space. Up, right? so we're gonna split them up, and that way my techs can focus on what they need to, and manufacturing can focus on what they need to, and um, it's gonna give us a lot more space. We're gonna have a full indoor wash bay for the first time, which is gonna be really, really, really nice. Um, we're actually gonna build, and I don't know of anybody in town who's got it, we're gonna actually build sprayers into the floor. So as you're pulling that piece of equipment in, you can turn those sprayers on and have it blast the undercarriage as oh, you're awesome. driving in. Yeah. Yeah, and sweet. so um, it's not going to get all of it, but it'll it'll get some of it. And the dirt that we have up here is mostly that clay. So you right. get it and it's dry. You can stand there with a pressure washer for an hour and yep. it, before it'll come off. Or you soak it, you walk away, you come back in an hour, you hit it again and it still blows off like it's nothing. Right. Um, and so... The idea is to kind of pre-soak it, have two or three pieces pulled in. By the time they're all pulled in, they're pre-soaked and they're ready to rock. All right. So that's that's the idea there. We're going to have a whole bunch of mechanics bays in here. Um, my rental department may end up coming over here. Um, so we're kind of, we're still playing around with blueprints right now. But, <laughs> you know, we've got, once the exterior goes up, then we can really play. Right. You so, start laying things out. And since we, you know, we keep everything in house, since we're owned by Fountainhead Development, Fountainhead is doing all of this. Uh, it was a real fight to get this property. It, uh, 
I think it was what, seven years ago, Napa burned down over here. Right. A lot of contaminants in the oils and everything they got. And so this lot was in a legal battle for years and years and years on, we want to buy it, we don't want to get stuck with any fines if it happens. Right. So we, about five years worth of working with them, Tim finally got him to approve it last fall. Um, so essentially, anything below where we're standing now, Napa owns. Anything above this, above subgrade, that's <laughs> us. So that way, if anything comes up from the bottom, you know, it's we did Napa, a lot of sniffer yeah. tests and everything, and everything passed flying colors. They had a couple spots they had hits, but they were really, really low and then within acceptable norms. Um, and so they gave us a go ahead and we brought in all the gravel and everything last fall. I mean, it was a ram, bam, slam, right, right to the last minute. So um, we'll have we'll have more to, a little more dirt work and stuff to do once once everything's settled and set. And, um, we recently acquired JCB as a dealership as well. So we are the only JCB dealership this side of California in the U.S. Um, so it'll be it'll be a good market for us to bring in a bunch of new rental equipment, um, JCP, which will get us bigger than Kubota makes. Right. Right? So we're really excited about that. That's really nice equipment. They've got those mono boom. It's like yeah, that's been there. there. It's just awesome. It, uh, it booms out. I want to say 11 foot. But I tell you what, for course it's snowing stuff, especially when you've got a big pile. It you can make a nice big tall pile. Instead of taking up all your ground right. Yeah, that, that's what I need right really now. Really <laughs> really I'm really in the middle of a snow pile competition with a guy in Quebec right now. And, and my, my 2601 don't get it high enough. And he, he has a giant snow blower and he blows his to the top. Well, you just need to buy this one. I, oh this my, is the new bad boy here. I love oh, man, this thing is, it's got the shuttle transmission in it as well. And it is just really fancier mean. than fancy. Oh, what is that? That's the... 30 L3560. Yep. Woo! The grand. That's a machine right there. Yes, it is. That's pretty sweet. Does one of everything and then some. <laughs> Limited, it says. I notice we haven't got the mirrors on there yet. That's what I need to get the mirrors? Fancy. I know. I know. Very nice. So it's a big step up from the B2650, which is still a really nice tractor, but yeah. man, you get in one of those and you're like, boy, well, I, don't, I, I could do It wouldn't fit all, in my garage. No. I could do all <laughs> of it with this bad boy. And, yeah. it, and they're really sweet, you know, unlike a lot of the other ones, these ones come with the rear remotes built in there. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of the deluxe stuff that the Grands come with it. It's a luxury tractor. Not exactly. Exactly. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And then we got our RTV line. What we do with our RTVs is we actually we buy them and we have them shipped to our uh, Washington branch. Um, and then they load them on a, because we get free shipping to, uh, I think it's what, Lodi? There. Right, right. And then um, we put them on, we pack them in a 55-foot uh, van, way tighter than the shipping company is going to do it. Right. And we sh save on shipping that way. So these ones all got shipped up from getting purchased down there. Those are sweet. They are very, are, very nice. I've never, I've never actually seen one of these RTVs by Kubota in person. Yeah, they're, they're super are, nice. They're really yeah. nice. We also have one of the Sidewinder models and Sidekick models, I apologize, oh. which are the gas-powered open cab ones. Right. Um, these ones will do about 23. If you're going down here, you might, you might coax 25 out of it. But what people How are, do you, you really know, need to go that fast. Well, anyway, you know, right? you got a lot of people, and they're trying to do apples to apples with like uh, the Polaris badass or... Polarises and the Skidoos, you know, and these, and those are like trail ripping, jumping, right. hill climbing. These are work. Yeah. You know, but you're gonna have this for four times as long. Oh, well, that diesel yeah. motor is gonna last forever. Oh yeah. yeah. And with the hydrostatic transmission on there, I mean, they're bulletproof. The only. The only thing we've ever had a problem with the transmission is a guy hit it and put a hole in it about that big, and it didn't really want to work very well after no, that. It <laughs> didn't go anywhere. All the fluid ran but out. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Other than that, they're, I mean, like you said, they're indestructible. Keep them serviced to keep the fluids up. You're ready to rock. Those they, are they'll, sweet they'll, sure. they'll heat you out at 40 below. You'll, you'll have to crack the window if they've been running long enough. <laughs> you know, my, my cousin's looking at Polaris and uh, K&M mm -hmm. things for for hunting and plowing his driveway and I'm this is yeah this yeah. would be perfect for that but the only but he thing, won't buy one I know he won't no. the only thing not about fast, taking no. them hunting is you'd want to have some darn good ground because they are way heavier than yeah. your side oh, by yeah. side 
Yeah. And so the problem being is we've got a bunch of customers who have purchased and thinking just that. We, we try to explain it to them. And they're like, well, I just can't go this way. What's many the places. weight of one of these things? Because oh, I know shoot. one of those Polarises or something is like 1,500 pounds. I want to say, I want to say these are at least 2,800 pounds. Oh, oh yeah. Heavy, heavy, heavy. You know, heavy. and so, you know, and, you know, they're like a little tractor. They don't go yeah. fast and they don't have the torque. You know, you get the thing in a hole. And unless it's got the traction to climb out, you're never going to dig yourself into right. a rut enough to where you're going to get it to climb out on its own. Um, so we sell a lot of uh, mount winch mounts for right. hitch. So you can front or rear, you know, wherever you need right. it at the moment. Uh, wiring on both ends, a quick plug. and But, you know, again, if you're in a mud pit, you're relying on the winch to get you out. Yeah. That's right. So it's kind of one of those things. you got to know where you're going. Yeah. Um, so a lot of places would be great. Like when I take the kids up grouse hunting up... Um, what is it, the logging road down uh, there by Standard Creek? Standard, Creek, Standard yeah. Creek, you know. Yep. It'd, be, it'd be awesome to haul yeah. the road on, you know, all yeah. those places, you know. And places I go, this wouldn't go. Yeah, you yeah know? that's right. It's all I can do to make my uh, my super light, uh, what, it's a 92 Kawasaki King Quad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, I tell you what, though, them things are geared so low that they'll do anything. I have an Arctic Cat 500. Uh huh. Oh, three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not bad. But it'll go. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, I got a good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got one. Uh, Groundhog's got one. It's parked over at the uh, Walmart. Walmart. Yep. And then uh, <laughs> I've got three or four of them out in town. We've got a bunch of them out. We've got some in St. Mary's right now. They blew a motor in one. Just lacks proper service uh, and overworking. Um, and so my two of my techs are down there right now in St. Mary's getting that uh, flew a motor in and uh, putting the motor in because you can't get to this place in the summertime right. rather than by barge and barge is slow so yeah. they need and expensive they need, and very expensive <laughs> so I want to say it was going to be eight grand for them to ship it to and from us round trip eight grand they couldn't wait for that so they paid us twenty eight I think it was what. $28,000 between the shipping of the motor to us and then us shipping the motor to them. Because being a dealership, the motor has to come here first. Right. We can't, we can't direct ship. Um, and then you guys have to get the old motor or verify that the old <coughs> motor is And we'll have to get that back later busted, and, and right? hold on to it for uh, warranty purposes for up to 120 days. Um, so what they're going to do is we worked out with the Boda that after we get this swapped and they're up and going, once the barge is start running, they're going to put the old blown up motor on a barge Quota will accept that having that weight, right. which they usually don't, but they understand we've got some pretty remote stuff, and you know, we bring a lot of stuff to the table for them that they just, you just don't think of when you right. down to the states, and it's just the way it is. You know, it's nobody's fault. It's if you're, I mean, it's just like me, man. If I went down to the states, I'd have a hell of a time. It's like, oh, I'm it's too hot. Like up here, it's like it's not getting hot. You know, right. it's a. Uh, um, so they figured out, worked with us on a lot of things, like the 95s. Um, they have issues because they have the depth and the tier four. They have issues right. of warming up properly. Um, and if they're not warmed up properly and somebody just goes out and starts ripping ramming, it will actually, the, the oil is so cold, it's not getting up turbo and doing right. proper lubrication of the turbo and so that's just, just because turbo, of our climate and here. it's because of our climate it's not i mean it's a great machine it's just it's hard to make one thing that fits every climate without the people from that climate going hey try this you know what we do up here you know right. and so we've done a lot of back and forth with them on that they love it you know they they really appreciate us as a dealership and it's pretty cool because there's a lot of companies out there that are like oh okay you know and, and you take tell right off the bat you're not right. even off the phone the guy's gonna just hang up and Rub your number now, out. is this the northernmost Kubota dealer in the world? It is. All yeah. right, there you go. Yep. We're at what latitude 64, I think, is what we're at. Yep. So, if you guys know of any place that's uh, further north, tell us, but I don't think so. I don't believe so. <laughs> I don't believe so. So, yeah, we've got them, uh, you know, we've got them so they're going to take a, they're going to allow us to run lighter weight oil in there and keep all warranty specs and everything right. standard. Um, now, do you recommend that for the, the compact tractors and stuff too? Run a lighter weight oil than the than the really. Uh, when my customers, I mean, you're you're running the standard 1040, which is uh, or 1540, which is pretty standard across the board for your diesel motors. Right. That's um, it's going to do fine in the summertime. 
problem is it's going to be higher in motor in the winter. Summer. Right. Well, that's what I'm wondering. And that's so we, we, we go down a little bit on, on oil, um, even at 1030. We'll just be just a little more viscous in that in that cold. Of course, we winterize all of ours with pad right. heaters, block heaters. Well, I keep mine in the um, garage. And even between our store and Anchorage and here, they do a block heater, and I think that's it. But the difference in climates is so much that yeah. they don't need that down there. And right. so we get them up here, I and mean, we've got heaters on the, on the transmissions, on the engine pan, we've got block heaters. We put a different coolant in there that's uh, down to 60 blokes. It's pink stuff that we dug over here. Um, and so there's been some that we've had to you know, get okay by Kubota so that, you know, under warranty standards, that way we don't do something that messes up in a warranty fleet or for a customer. Or, um, so it's really cool that they're willing to work for us right. or work with us. And, well, they kind of got to, you know yep. I mean? They got a big exactly. dealer. I mean, exactly. you guys got we're, we're in the 90th percentile, which is the highest in the nation. Of course, it's per capita, right? you know, but per capita is per capita, and we're at 90%. So... There's more orange out there. Out yeah. of 10 tractors, nine of them will be orange. Well, I see, I see yeah. the John Deere dealers moved into a better location. They have, they have, they have. They have, the only problem is, is every other week you go in there, it's a whole new crew. And so, <laughs> you know, it's hard to stand by your purchase when you're like, well, God, the guy I talked to that said this or that or the other thing isn't. That green paint's expensive, anymore. too. Yeah, that is.